Jack Booth served in the 5th Searchlight Regiment, 13th Battery, in Singapore. When the Japanese attacked, he was captured and forced to work on the Thai Boma Railway. Jack developed tropical ulcers and had to have both legs amputated in a jungle camp. Here he describes that experience and how he adjusted to life as a double amputee. I moved to the main camp called Kinsaya Base Camp. It wasn't a, a very pleasant place. In fact, if there is or was a place called Hell, if there is a such a place, that was it. And uh, I'd been bitten on my right leg early on, and then my left leg got pierced with a piece of poisonous bamboo. There's a bamboo up in the Thai jungle that has a a thorn on it, and if you got scratched with it, it soon went bad. And those ulcers, they were the results of that. It didn't take long to get a sore as bad as that. But I went down to Chunkai, and that was a, supposed to be a sick camp, where men were dying like flies. I'd only been in Chunkai a short while, when the medical officer, when he saw my legs, he said it, it's a case of your legs will have to come off or it'll be the rice bags. Well, rice bags meant that you were dead and you were being buried. When he started the operation, he gave me, uh, to call it a spinal jab, a needle through your spine. But when he started the operation and, it, and the knife, as soon as the knife went in, I could tell it hadn't taken, the, the anaesthetic hadn't taken properly. And I must have let out a yell, and I heard the, the medical officer say, hold him down. Well, there was about three, three men, I don't know who they were, but the three men holding me down whilst they finished the operation. But I, I'd rather not go into that part of it. It was a gruesome, how they came off, it, it was a thing that I'd never dreamed of. That I didn't know they took them off that way, but... That's what happened. It was a, a case of the, it saw the bones just so far and then try and snap it off, which uh, it was all very uncomfortable. And they tried at least three times to, to take my le left leg off that way. But the, the right leg, they, they, took, they seemed to take a little bit more time with it. And it wasn't as bad as this, the, the left leg that was coming off. The pain before they were taken off was, was so... Oh, I don't know I don't how to explain this. It was... I've ne never slept for, for weeks and weeks with, with, uh, with the pain in my legs. After they were taken off, I think I must have had the first night's sleep in a long time because the pain had gone. After they were taken off, I started to uh, to build up again. I, I was feeling better in myself, where before it was a case of so low down in, in life that you were you hadn't much fight in you at that time. And the men, I've seen men beg the medical officer to take the leg off. And it, it was a, a, like a bad dream, really. It's something I don't, I don't like to, going back to that part, really. It, there was a, an Australian lad called Bob Fox, and he knew a man that had had a leg off prior to the war. How that man got into the Australian army with a leg off below the knee, I'll never know. But he did, and he was on the railway. And Bob, he thought, the men that have lost a leg below the knee, I'll try and build them a leg like that. And he did, with bits and pieces that he could get hold of. Eventually, he made legs for men above the knee. And then, uh, after a while, he said, OK, Jack, you're next. He said, oh, no, I'll fix you up with some. And he made me some short ones with the socket for these limbs, where uh, an army backpack cut open and then made into a, a socket with eyelets in and you had raw eyed laces sort of thing and it, it worked 
When the artificial legs were made, I started to walk around the hook where we were on level ground. And then when the war did finish, it just sent a numbness over people. I, I just felt numb when the war finished. Everybody were that overjoyed. And uh, for me, I, I just felt numb. The only time it hit me about my legs being off was when I, I did get home. I went up to where my parents lived and my bike was still under the staircase in the kitchen where it had been all through the war. And at that time I got a lump in my throat when I saw it. I thought, you'll never ride that again. And that's the only time that my disability really hit me because up to joining the army that bike was part of me. When I first came home and I got fitted up with artificial limbs and I was sitting at home, the first thing that came over me was do something. You, you've got to do something. You can't just sit around with artificial limbs. And there were some allotments, you know. And one of these little outfits was for sale and I bought this. That's how I spent the first year or two of my disability. I think anybody that does lose a limb, if they don't get on with it and do something, I would think they'd be lost. Please help to rescue and preserve more memories of the Second World War. Visit www.war-experience.org.